that's okay. No, but really, I think that um, for me, the two main issues are the ones that you have accurately captured. For the first time in our history, we are going to go into an election where the two major parties are being led by a president and his predecessor. It's not happened before. Usually it is an incumbent against somebody who's coming for the first time. This is the first time where the immediate past president and the current president. So the issue of their record is absolutely critical. I think it's, we have to be very, very insistent on looking at the records of the two leaders in the period of, uh, of, their, of, their, of their governorship, as it were. Uh, and um, I think that it's, it's, uh, it's, it's inescapable as far as this election is concerned. And then secondly, deriving from it is also the question of how well did they have managed the various issues in the country during that time. Uh, and when we're talking about that, we're not talking just about COVID, we're talking about the whole oh, period, uh, for me, from the 7th of January. 2017, right up till today, right up to the election. And I think, too, that is also inescapably part of the mix, a critical part of the mix for this election. So as far as identifying the two, the two critical issues that we have to define for the Ghanaian electorate, I think you're spot on in insisting on, first of all, the comparison of record how effective uh, both presidents have been in, in terms of furthering social and economic uh, advance in our country. And then, of course, the quality of the leadership that they provided. Uh, the, the, in, the, in the countries with the, with the nuclear capability, they asked, who would you like to have your as the man with the finger on the, uh, on, the, on, the on, on the bomb, uh, we, we don't have. But we still have to ask ourselves who best can manage the affairs of our country, both in normal times as well as in, um, in extraordinary times, like these last three or four months. And in talking about the record, I think there's one thing which is very important for us in the NPP, to continue to stress. The quality of achievement of this government in various areas, whether it's in health, education, infrastructure development, across board, social and economic, has been one that has affected virtually everybody in the country, at all parts of the country. There's no part of Ghana that can say that somehow or other they've been left out of the programs and developments of this government. And that has to be a very critical aspect of our outreach. Because it is possible for us, every nook and cranny of Ghana, to point to something that we have done which matters to people, whether it is in the establishment of schools or in the, in the enhancement of agriculture, whether we're talking about uh, 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 the development of infrastructure in one form or another, or the water, toilets, roads, all these go into the idea that our program is meant to serve the generality of the people. And it's important that we continue to stress that. We have to do a campaign in Ghana which is not about where you come from whipping up ethnic sentiments. It has never helped this country, and it will not help us. We, and we should be the very first to recognize this diversity, this mosaic, this Ghanaian tapestry, which is full of so many different elements, but comes together in the Ghanaian statement. And we should be stressing that. The Ghana project is what I call it. Secondly, in making the Ghana project to the other issues, whether, whether you are a Muslim or a Christian, I'm very strongly a Christian, I'm part of the big Christian majority in Ghana, but it shouldn't be part of our discourse. And clearly, gender should not be also part of our discourse. We are looking at all times at records, at competencies. So it is, should be possible 
for the discussion amongst these people and before the Ghanaian people to be a discussion about competencies, abilities, records, achievements, output. So I think that that is something that um, I, I, would like, I would like us to stress very much. All the stuff yeah, about, you know, we have some tribal agenda, we want to disenfranchise people in the foreign of in, in, in the, in the, in the water. I don't understand where that is coming from. Uh, and it's, it's, it's deliberate, it's artificial. Anybody who knows the mechanics of Ghana knows that that is artificial and uh, is being done for very short-term political gains. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that it's, it's a legitimate way of advancing a political agenda. Certainly, it was, it's not one that I would want to, uh, to, pro, to promote. Thank you. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Enjoy your quarantine. I have five more days. I don't know what you do in quarantine. <laughs> all the, all the, the, the memoranda and papers I have not read, I'm reading them now. Yeah, and I'm finding myself busier than when I actually go from here to, to, okay. to, to Jubilee House. But that, that is it. And uh, I'm finding myself extremely busy. Well, Mr. President, we are very grateful um, for joining us. I think that your your comments and suggestions are um, very important. They are very insightful. We will factor all of these as we continue to finalize um, our communication strategy going forward.